Hi, this is Arn Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. Ever since the film Waking Life, Animator Kind has been trying to find an easy way to turn their video into cartoon. Now, I attempted to find a solution in my three-part tutorial at Creative Cow, aptly called Creating a Cartoon from Video. But the truth is, while it was a free solution, and at the time one of only a handful of semi-okay solutions, it wasn't an ideal solution. But hey, like I said, it was free, and though it never achieved real cartoon status, it did, in a roundabout way, lead to a great solution. Allow me to explain. So here's the situation. I'm showing some of my cartoonification stuff up on a screen at the National Association of Broadcasters conference a few years ago, and this dude comes up to me and asks me how I did it. And after explaining the very painful process involved, he shows me this video to cartoon software that he's been working on. Just then, in a moment of pure serendipity, my friends from the plug-in company Digital Anarchy are coming around the corner, and I say, guys, you've got to see this. Anyway, a few months later, tune it for After Effects, the video to cartoon plugin is born. And of course, as you probably know, Red Giant recently acquired it, retooled it, revamped it, and opened it up to several more applications, so that now it's available as a plugin for Adobe After Effects, Premiere Pro, Apple Final Cut Pro and Motion, and Avid Express Pro and Media Composer. And if you buy it for one, you get it for all. By the way, if you bought Tunit from Digital Anarchy, you, my friend, are entitled to all of the aforementioned rockin' updates. Check the Red Giant support page for all the fun details. And like the name says, Tunit can create a variety of traditional animation styles from your video with just a few settings changes, but it's still quite flexible for real control over the look and feel. So if you're looking for a good solution to cartoonify your video, this is the plugin for you. All thanks to, aha, uh -huh, yours truly. Well, yeah, there were a couple of programmers and engineers doing some of the hard work, and I was more like a guy who happened to just be standing there. But hey, I'm at least taking a little bit of credit on this one, all right? In fact, they wanted to call it Tune It, but with a question mark, like, Tune It? And I said, oh no, you have to sound like you mean it. Use an exclamation point. Okay, that last part's not true, but the rest of the story is. So let's just leave it at that and move on. Now, while Tune It can create a cartoon look, I'm going to adapt it a bit to create a watercolor painting look. And while I'll be using After Effects, some and possibly all of this can be achieved in some of the other host apps. But you may need to get creative to achieve some of the same effects outside of After Effects. So here I am in After Effects in a composition containing a clip from the Artbeats Fitness HD library. I've used other clips from this awesome library in a previous episode called Controlling Time with Audio. Now the composition is running at 12 frames per second. Whenever I turn video into cartoon, I always like to set my footage to 12 or even 10 frames per second, the way real 2D traditional animation is done to save money. I've actually worked with several traditional animation studios, and they all use a much lower frame rate than the target format. In other words, every frame gets repeated at least once, and sometimes as much as three times. It depends on the budget. As any traditional animator will tell you, Drawing 24 to 30 frames of animation for every second of video is time consuming and ultimately expensive for the client. So corners get cut and we as an audience are very forgiving. In fact, it's a standard that we've come to expect. So we're so used to seeing cartoons done this way that if the video we turned into cartoon ran at say 30 frames per second, it wouldn't look real or fake. I mean, you know what I mean. The point is that while we can do more frames for no additional cost, it doesn't hold up to the expectation. So, using a lower frame rate will compensate for that. Anyway, with my footage selected, I'll choose Effect, Red Giant, Tune It, Roto Tune. By the way, if you don't have Tune It, you can download a trial version from the Red Giant software website. In the effects panel, I'll find the property called Lighter and I'll set it to 50%. This lightens the color and depending on the footage and the values set here can add more or less detail. In this case, slightly more. Let's move further down the effects panel until we see the comic checkbox currently turned on. Uncheck it and you'll see that our outlines have disappeared. For now, let's leave this footage as is, but we'll return to it in a little bit. Create a new solid by choosing Layer, New, Solid. And then in the dialog, give it the name Texture. Then set it to the same size as the composition and then in the color picker set the color to white and then click OK to confirm the color 
and OK again to confirm the creation of the new solid. Then, with the solid selected, choose Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. Fractal Noise is a great effect, probably the most robust and useful effect that ships with After Effects. I'm only going to scratch the surface of it here, but I've used it in tons of my tutorials that you can find at Creative Cow, AllBetsAreOff.com, and of course here at RedGiantTV.com. In the effects panel, set the contrast to 18, which removes a lot of the fractal noise detail. Then, set the brightness up to 45, which brightens up the fractal noise, but still keeps the detail minimal. Then, go into the transform properties and set the scale down to 2. Then, and this is just sort of a bonus, we're going to animate the noise a little bit. There are plenty of times you won't want to do this, but in this case, I like the way it looks. You may not. Go into the Evolution Options and find the property called Random Seed, which is used to create random variations in the noise. So if you had two layers with the exact same fractal noise effect, you could change this number and the effect will look different. Not so different that it's a different effect, but different enough that it doesn't look like you just repeated the layer. Anyway, I'll Alt-click on the Random Seed property stopwatch to create an expression, and then in the timeline, in the expression editor, I'll type the following, time times 12. Now, this word time in here makes the effect use the value of time to generate the random seed value. So at one second, random seed would equal one, and at two seconds, the random seed value would equal two. But since there are 12 frames per second, and I want the random seed property to change at every single frame and not just once per second, I've added this times 12 to the expression. With our frame rate being 12 frames per second, this will cause the random seed value to update at every frame. There are definitely other and probably better expressions that will achieve what I've done here, but this is simple and it gets the job done. So if you scroll through time, as you can see, the fractal pattern changes at each frame. Next, we're going to use this texture layer to make our footage look like it's painted on canvas, and we'll use the texturize effect to do that. Now you have to take my word for this, or try it on your own time, but the texturize effect won't see the fractal noise effect on this layer. All it will see is the solid white layer that we put it on. A lot of effects are like this, and a simple solution is to pre-compose. So, with the fractal texture layer selected, choose Layer, Pre-compose. And in the dialog, choose the option called Move All Attributes, and make sure that the Open New Composition option is unchecked. We don't need to get in there. Click OK to confirm. OK. Then, just turn off the Texture Pre-Comp Layer's eyeball switch to make it invisible. Then, select our footage and choose Effect, Stylize, Texturize. In the Effects panel, set the Texture Layer to our Texture Pre-Comp. Do a RAM preview, and you can see that we have a watercolor look to our footage. Now again, as I said, you may not want to animate the random seed value, but I happen to like the way it makes each image look like it's been painted on a different piece of canvas. Now let's do a little variation here. In the effects panel, back in the tune it effect, set the lighter property up to 100%. That actually removes some of the detail, definitely giving it a more painterly look. But okay, Picasso, maybe that's not painterly enough for you. So you could try adding the brush strokes effect by choosing Effect, Stylize, Brush Strokes. Just make sure that in the Effects panel, you move the brush strokes effect above the Texturize effect in the stack order so that the texture is preserved. Do a RAM preview, and it looks pretty cool. And of course, you can adjust the way the strokes look. Finally, and I won't get into it here, but you could also add Magic Bullet Quick Looks or Looks into the mix to crush your colors a bit and get a more defined color palette. Hopefully, these tips will help make your art look more like, well, art. And if you don't have Red Giant Tune It, you can always download a trial version of the software and test it out. And just for watching this tutorial, we're going to give you a discount on Red Giant Tune It. Go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get this and other special Red Giant TV deals. Now these are time sensitive discounts. They won't last forever. All coupon codes expire seven days from the launch date of each tutorial. So again, go to redgiantsoftware.com 
forward slash promos to get the coupon codes for the most current Red Giant TV discounts. Act now? No. Act now. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.